Hello to all my friends out there. I thought I would I would switch it up a little. I'm at Smart and Final and I'm about to go in and look and see if they have any good steaks thin cut on sale. Because I need to dehydrate some for my uh, diet. So um, when I, in my life, I was thinking about on the way over here, I had like, I had like nine lives, first of all. But in my first life, at a very young, young age, I started uh, hair dressing. And I was a stylist from the time I was about 15 until I was about 65. In there somewhere, I spent 10 years studying nursing and I fully expe expected to become a nurse. And I would never sacrifice my son's college. So, you know, I kept putting it off. And then, you know, you get so old and you go, well, I'm just lucky I'm not the patient. And so my idea was to retire. And uh, recently, I started going into uh, real estate with no intention, you know, of becoming a realtor, but things have changed. So I like a fluid life. So I've been studying this real estate quite a bit and pretty soon, you know, I'll, I'll start, you know, getting serious. But um, so it's all kind of tied in with the economy, real estate is. Well, everything, stocks, you know, everything. So um, I was thinking about, about it and what I think is, it, we're we're heading for a recessionary period and soon and you know there is a few a uh, few telltale signs and I've been hearing stuff online I went to McDonald's on the way and there's one right over here and a, and a Dollar Tree so um some people are saying that the variant will spike on the 3rd of December. So I'm being very, very careful to wait and see what happens. Uh, Monday, I'm going over to babysit. So a little, I'm so happy. I told my son, can't you both like find something to do seven days a week and you know, I can babysit. So I, I'm going to get the booster the day after I babysit in case, you know, we, or, you know, I'm over visiting the baby in case the booster, you know, sheds some, you know, variant germs or something. I want to get it before, before it spikes. And then, so they're saying, you know, we can expect a, a supply chain a disruption. This is why I'm over here buying some beef and some nuts and some avocados, you know, diet food. But they're saying it's because the truckers are refusing to get vaccinated. It's possible the vaccinations could be responsible for some nasty uh, side effects. But it's also possible that the truckers could get the COVID. And then they're saying that the, the uh, debt, the, the, the American people have record high um, levels of debt and record low levels of money in the bank that uh, they had money in the bank there for a while because of the stimulus money and that possibly the tax returns are going to be held up somehow so you know we want to prepare for that and one of the best things we can do is stockpile food but um it's like any threat if you you know there's a defensive approach where you're the defensive approach is insist people socially distance and wear your mask, I mean the offensive, um, you know, and then there's like, um, it's like you know the threat exists of catching the COVID, of possible supply shortages, of, of recession, so you say to yourself, okay, strong possibility, and they're saying the, 
they're saying this could it's imminent it's gonna some people are saying get ready it's like a few days and i wouldn't doubt that either they might somehow spring it on us um i've been through um several recessions and and i've usually survived them pretty well because i would just you know live very lowly you guys see me do it all the time so um so if also if the the truckers are are driving all over the country with the variant because it's less uh, deadly. Uh, I see people on YouTube and they're out, they're flying all over. They know they have the variant. Also in uh, San Diego, I see a lot of people, uh, you know, foreign people who have probably been leaving areas to get to safer areas. Uh, there are areas in, in this county with almost last time no COVID and no issues uh, like, uh, now this town, this is Oklahoma. Yeah, we did have some pro some protests here. And in La Mesa we did. So, you know, if the economy gets really, really bad, uh, you know, and they start protesting where I'm living now, there's no access. That's what I like. Um, and also if I go out the other direction to the better area, I come up this direction a lot because I go the back way to the shopping center, but I can, you know, access the uh, freeway. So, you know, I'm saying, okay, one of the reasons they're saying not much food is going to be on the shelves is because they know people don't have any money. So they're just, you know, they're doing just in time shopping. And so, um, and we've had a lot of at Christmas time, I have never seen so much um, shoplifting. So that drives the price up. The rest of us have to pay for the shoplifters. But I always say, but by the grace of God, there go I. So we're saying, okay, we're watching for bad weather that could that could um, disrupt the supply chain. Last week I had to refund an eBay order because I live in San Diego. I mailed a lady a book on this is from San Diego to Utah via the post office, which is the most expensive way you can ship something. And it was like 15 days later and she still didn't have the book. So that is ridiculous. So I don't know if it was bad weather in Utah, but about a year ago, my son got caught in a blizzard going from San Diego to uh, Las Vegas. That's not blizzard country. Also, um, I heard Lake Mead was very low on water. And then, you know, I'm always saying, you know, Governor Newsom is doing a good job. He really is, actually. And this kind of cracked me up. This part's not funny. We had a trash, what is this called? A trash um, protest. The trash people are not happy. And they want us separating our food trash from our trash trash because we're going to use our food trash for fertilizer because we got to depend, I think it's on China for fertilizer. And, you know, another bad thing is this Olympics thing. You know, that seems like a good way. Okay, so China said they have one case of the variant. <laughs> okay, sorry, I don't believe you. So we're watching for supply chain disruptions, which are not funny. Um, the year before last, I stocked up on a lot of canned food. Uh, last month, I bought almost nonstop um, meat. So if the supply chain hits us, we want to stockpile up, you know, on water. For some reason, I have an aversion for refilling my water. I got to do that. So we're we're watching for a recession coming soon. 
one of the best things is um, your food storage. And then if you can save a little money, I was watching these like wealthy people, you know, on uh, YouTube and they said, you know, really, uh, it's, it's a non-issue. Just go buy $300 worth of food. Okay, you maxed out your credit card, you don't have any cash, and $300 is gonna save your life. Why don't you just say to yourself, okay, tax time is coming. Maybe I can find a way to put away $300, or one of the things I do is I save a little extra money all the time for gas, because gas is really brutal out here. Sometimes it's $5 a gallon, so I save a dollar a day, thanks to Jan from New York City Saves Money. I have a little, uh, I put a dollar or two every now and then for gas, and you know, just in case, and I'm trying to think if there's any other little ways to save money, but this $300 thing is a good point. And if, if I see something out here that I don't like, I will speed to Costco and buy a pallet and I'll just somehow fit it in the house. So um, we're watching for that and thinking, well, maybe I can uh, save up $300 somehow. And so like, you know, people with money, $300 is like, uh, like, um, here's your lunch money, you know, like you used to give your kid. So, um, at, um, just to put it into perspective, like for a poor person, like if you're poor, um, a dollar a day is $30 in a month. So you need approximately 10 months just to save a dollar a day, $300. So, you know, it's really not a joke. And also, you know, um, I just want to mention one more thing. It's about, um, there is this, um, there is this story in the self-help group. A man was walking down um, a hole. He was walking down a street and he fell in a hole and it was a terrible ordeal and it took him a long time to get out. Then the next time he knew the hole was there, but he got too close to the hole and he fell in. And then the next time he fell in, some nut jumped in and said, hey, listen, I know the way out. So you'll never fall in this hole again. And the hole was, you know, drinking, but um, say like debt say like uh, food storage, you know, I get all kinds of help from these women, you know. So let's say um, saving money, okay. I know if I save, if I spend all my money tomorrow, I'm not gonna have any money and it's gonna be pretty bad for me. So I just fell in the hole. So, okay, then the next thing I know, I know if I spend all my money and I fall in that hole, and then there's some lady like Jan from New York City who says, just save a dollar a day. Or somebody like me who says, try to get yourself $300. I know the way out. Uh, try to be thrifty. Try to get food storage. That's that's the, the way out. So, um, you know, these videos, I have been helped immensely. Um, oh, I'll show you my necklaces. Okay, so once again, I have too much jewelry on. I sell it, you guys. If I need money, I'll sell my kimono sunglasses. These are cute. Some young girl will buy these. I will sell them when I'm done with them. I'll sell them cheap. Or this watch. Where is this watch? Fashion watch. Yes, I will sell it cheap. And, you know, if I need money, I'm always thinking, this is my $12 coat I bought myself for my birthday. When I'm done with it, I will sell it for 5 bucks. See my new barrettes? Aren't they so cute? So you guys, we're going to be watching for this supply chain disruption. Please like, comment, and subscribe, and God bless you all.